Well, hello, my friends. Welcome to Granny B's house. Are you having a good day? Oh, I hope so. Granny B's having a pretty good day. Are you remembering to be kind to the people around you? Are you doing little things to make the world a better place? Well, you know, when Granny B's recording this, we're just entering in to the holiday season where a lot of people are super, super busy and super stressed out. And everybody has a big list of chores and errands and things they think they have to buy. Well, I hope our acts of kindness can make their world a better place. Our help, you know, just helping out with some of the chores can make their world a better place. So let's just remember to be kind to those people who are looking super stressed out this time of year. Well, I'm going to read you a story about a Christmas wish. And oh, yes, I know, we're making lists of things we think we need for Christmas. And I think we need to think more about giving at Christmas and not about buying but about giving, giving from our hearts, giving from our love and kindness to other people. Well, Pocket's Christmas wish is a little different than that. And this is written by Anne Bonwell and illustrated by Russell Julian. And it's just a very sweet story about a bunny rabbit and the question that he's trying to get answered. So I'm going to move out of the way, and you can see all these beautiful snowy pictures. Okay. Ooh, yeah. On Christmas morning, just outside their burrow, five rabbits met a snow angel. Four rabbits hopped ahead to the skating pond, but Pocket, the littlest rabbit, stayed behind. He had a question to ask. Excuse me, said Pocket. Can you tell me the meaning of Christmas? But the snow angel didn't answer. Pocket wrinkled his bunny nose. He twitched his bunny ears. He wiggled his bunny whiskers. The snow angel sparkled in the lemon light, but still she didn't answer. A trail of footprints led away from the snow angel's skirt. It stretched as far as Pocket could see. I wish I knew the meaning of Christmas, thought Pocket. Maybe if I follow the footprints, I'll find it at the end. And off he hopped. The footprints wound around the edge of the skating pond, Pocket paused to watch his brothers and sisters swooshing and spinning together on the ice. In their bunny smiles, Pocket could see the love of family. But the footprints didn't stop at the pond, so Pocket hopped on. Pocket followed the footprints to a holly bush where a little bird was trilling and chirping among the berries as he listened to the merry music, Pock could hear the song of joy. But the footprints zigzagged away from the bush, so Pocket hopped on. The footprints led Pocket to a clearing in the forest where the air was thick with the scent of coming snow. As he sniffed the air, Pocket could smell the memory of winter's past. But the footprints made a loop around the clearing and tiptoed out the other side. Pocket still wished he could find the meaning of Christmas, so he hopped on. Pocket followed the footprints to a fallen log. It was starting to snow. He caught the dancing flakes on his pink bunny tongue. They tasted fresh, like the promise of something new. But the footprints didn't stop at the log, so Pocket hopped on. Oh, look at this. 
Up ahead, a pine tree grew tall and strong. Pocket sat under its branches to rest his tired bunny feet. The carpet of pine needles felt soft, like the comfort of home. He wished he could stay and rest a while, but the footprints weren't resting, so Pocket hopped on. Pocket was cold. The wet snow coated his bunny nose and ears and clung to his bunny whiskers. Pocket was hungry, but he couldn't eat the grass. It was tucked beneath the snow for the winter. Pocket wondered how he was supposed to find the meaning of Christmas with a rumbling tummy and icy whiskers. He plodded on down a hill and across a stream until he came to a small cottage with a dark red door. The footprints ended there. Pocket peered through the cottage window. He saw three children gathered around a tree with twinkling lights. He heard their happy laughter and smelled the woodsy smoke of their log fire. He even tasted the faint flavor of cinnamon wafting out of the cracks around the window frame. The snow under Pocket's feet didn't feel so cold anymore. Then the dark red door opened just a sliver and a fat orange carrot appeared. Pocket hopped over to the carrot with his mouth watering, but as he started to nibble, a baby wood mouse scurried out from under the shed. The mouse looked cold. The mouse looked hungry. The mouse looked up at Pocket with round mouse eyes. As he shared the carrot with the mouse, Pocket knew the gift of giving. At last, his wish had come true. He had found the meaning of Christmas. Pocket hopped home, his heart full of love, joy, memory, promise, and comfort. The gifts of the Christmas season. When Pocket reached the skating pond, his brothers and sisters were just coming off the ice. As soon as they saw him, they shook their bunny tails and thumped their bunny feet. Merry Christmas, said Pocket as he chased them back to the burrow. And it was a Merry Christmas. Well, I hope you all have a Merry Christmas and I hope all your questions and all your wishes can be whatever you, whatever you wish for. You know, we all celebrate Christmas and other holidays around this time in our own way. And I hope you remember that the key to Christmas is giving, giving your kindness, giving your love, giving your assistance, helping people out with all the things they think they have to do. So, well, Granny B will always love you, no matter what season. And I hope you'll come back and see me again real soon so I can read you another story. Okay? Bye-bye.